My name is Pandit Dasa and I lived as a monk in New York City for 15 years. I was a monk on the Lower East Side of New York City. No! Yes, so I was never oh, wow. living in a cave in India or something. Now I'm no longer a monk. Now I help organizations develop a positive, mindful workplace culture that builds trust, creates an engaged workforce, and helps retain talent. Appreciation motivates employees to work harder and it prevents them from developing a wandering eye. You know, they're not on LinkedIn posting their resume. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's happening, it happens real fast. So many, there's so much research out there showing people leave if they're not appreciated at work. I mean, forget work, take a moment, life. You're not gonna stick around in a relationship if you're not appreciated. Appreciation is like making deposits in an emotional bank account, and feedback is making withdrawals from that relationship. Feedback is real easy to give, because we can see each other's faults and shortcomings real easy. It's not hard. But appreciation is not so easy to give sometimes because of a different reason. Maybe we're feeling threatened or whatever it is. So, especially in a workplace environment, if you're in a supervisory role, you really have to analyze, am I making more withdrawals from the bank account or am I making more deposits? Is this bank account running on negative? If it's running on negative for a long time, it's gonna close down and the wandering eye is gonna start. The culture of a company starts with the leadership. It's crucial that leaders are leading by example that they're doing the things that they're asking their employees to do. Really asking ourselves, what is my motivation for doing what I'm doing? And especially if in a leadership role, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I here to serve others or am I here to be served? Am I here just to control everyone so that everybody can serve me? Or am I really here to bring the best out of everyone? And one key component of mindful leadership is really leading by example. You know, I think we're, we're all tired of somebody telling us to do something and they're not doing it themselves. Saying one thing and doing another. And it's so important, especially if those who are in leadership positions, to really lead by example, you know? You gotta walk the talk. That culture of appreciation, it's, it's not just appreciation from top down. We're talking about across the board. Creating a culture within an organization where people are learning to appreciate others and we're not threatened by other people's success. Employees that are happy at work are more loyal and productive because when there's trust, there's greater collaboration and that leads to organizational growth. We don't have to just be the best one. Whereas if we learn to hold on to each other and support one another, everyone can succeed. And that's the mentality I think we want to be able to develop. You work hard, but if somebody else succeeded, congratulate them, feel happy for them. Don't wait for them to fail and then feel happy. Basically, mindfulness means to become aware of your thoughts and emotions and come into the present moment, because most of the time we're not in the present moment. We're either planning the future or we're stuck in the past. Mindfulness will help us have more balanced emotions so that we don't lose our cool, especially in a workplace environment, working in teams, lose your cool and it can really mess things up. It can really hurt relationships. So it allows us to remain emotionally balanced, more calm, more cool during difficult situations. Try not to correct people publicly. If you're in a leadership role, very important. Don't embarrass people. If we do, that is just like horrible, horrible, horrible. Creating a toxic environment because when they're embarrassed, guess what? They're going to talk to their colleagues about it. No one can hold in happiness and no one can hold in distress.